Today, that we are your children, not forsaken, not lost, but found and welcome home. The door is open, there is room and a chair and a space for us, Lord God, and you have called us home. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You may be seated. Happy birthday, Carolyn, for this week and others. Yeah. 34! Oh, no. Yes, that's good. Uh, yes, and, and others may have had birthdays. I hear there was a wedding anniversary of some dear people as well, and other things going on. So, God bless you all. Yeah. Yeah. We'll have to call the fire brigade for those candles, I'm sure, Carolyn. <laughs> Uh, but we're here to open God's word, amen? Yes. Still here? Lovely. Good. Every one matters. So continuing this little theme, uh, the last instalment will probably be next week. I'll be sick of it by then. Uh, but, but thanks this week for the positive feedback and the text messages, and I hear you're still going to be around and all those fun things, so thank you for that as we honour God uh, in this place and honour Him in all that we do, so thank you. Times there's a lot of misinformation, isn't there? And confusion, and did you see that, or did you read that, and, and fake news. Some of us need to be reminded today that we need, maybe, to get our heart and life right with God. Maybe you need to get back on track, if you've gotten off track. But in a time of many, many voices screaming at us, I want to remind you today that there is one source of wisdom that has stood the test of time. Human life tested, not for six months or three years, but for thousands of years. Hundreds of millions of lives, men and women, every nation, every tongue, every culture, every background, every community. And they have found a source of wisdom that has no secret agenda. That source of wisdom, friends, is the Word of God. And God has no agenda other than to make your life better. To give you the abundant life that his son came to give you. He is motivated by one motivation. And that is his great love for you. He's not trying to get you to vote a certain way. He's not trying to get you to buy something. He's not trying to get you to move. There's no hidden agenda. He's not trying to manipulate you. He's not trying to twist the truth. He's not trying to play a game. He is the only being that tells the flat out truth every day of your life. And he tells you the truth because he loves you and wants to set you free. 1 Peter 2, 9. Up there on the screen. But you are chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praise of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. The equation is simple. But this idea is profound. Everyone matters. He has lifted you and I out of darkness. And for every believer, I wasn't, but now I am. I didn't know, but now I do. I was all alone, but now I am not. I was without hope, but now I have hope. You know who I am? I am a child of God. Yes, I am. I am chosen. I am holy. God's special possession. And this is available to all through Jesus Christ. For now I am participating in his marvellous and glorious light. The result is easy. I'm going to declare his praise. I'm going to praise him. 
who did the work and made me who I am. My life's mission is clear and it is to declare the praise of God who made me who I am. When I was dead, I couldn't, but now I am alive and I may. When I was in darkness, I couldn't see, but now I'm in the light, I can see. And I will tell of his goodness, I will tell of his mercy, and I will give him praise. I may serve God, I may give generously, I may care for others. What about you? I'm part of his eternal plans on planet no one is twisting my arm behind my back no one's trying to trick me or scam me it's a privilege of mine and yours here today to enter into the things of God his plans and his purposes I may not have it all figured out but I know this I've come through the door I've entered through the cross I may open my mouth and give him praise because he knows our name and he saw us and he calls us to be his children and he moves us from darkness to light. For you, Lord Jesus, are our good shepherd and I am thankful that we have heard his voice. And I will open my mouth and give him praise. Jesus reminds us in John 10, 11 to 14, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and it scatters. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Jesus won't just get us up that mountain or through that valley and say, okay, there you go. You're on your own. Off you go. No, he is the good shepherd. He was willing to lay down his life for you and I. He will lead us in and out and through and beyond. Beyond our current concern, beyond our current circumstance, let him lead you. He will restore your soul. And he'll lead us to those greener pastures and cooler waters where we can find healing and restoration. The promises of God are for everyone and everybody. It's not just for select, a selected few or the right background or the right upbringing or the right culture or the right education. The Christian faith, friends, is for everyone. And we must create circles of connection and friendship and community and growth. God hasn't written us off. And God wants to write you into the gospel story. He wants to write you into his story. And how do I know? Because his son stretched out his arms on a cross to say, I love you and I'm for you and I'm the good shepherd and I'm lay day, laying down my life for you. Everybody can be written into the gospel story. Everybody can be a difference maker in the affairs of people and nations as they call on heaven from their knees. Great email about RI. Thanks, Cheryl, for that. It's going to continue. It's going to go on into next year. doesn't matter what parliament or what party. It's continuing on. Fantastic. Psalm 145, 18 and 19. The Lord is near to all, on call, all who call on him. 
to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him. He hears their cry and saves them. Who needs that today? Maybe that's all you need. Maybe you can go home now, happy, content, because you've been reminded that God hears you. And you can call on him in your time of need. We have this great story in John 9, 1 to 12. A blind guy regains his sight. It's John 9, 1 to 12. As he went along, he saw a blind man from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Neither this man nor his parents sinned, Jesus said. But this happened so that the work of God might be displayed in him. As long as it's day, we must do the works of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. This is Jesus speaking. After saying that, he spat on the ground and yummy, yummy, made some mud with the saliva and put it on the man's eyes. I better try that one. Hey, Ron? Yeah, we're lining up for that. Go, he told him, wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sent. So the man went and washed, and he came home seeing yes. His neighbours and those who had formerly seen him begging asked, Isn't this the same man who used to sit and beg? You know, Barry the beggar, the blind guy, Barry the blind beggar by the road. Isn't that him? Some claimed it was. Others said, oh, no, it just looks like a bit unsure, really. But he himself insisted, I am the man. How then were your eyes open, they asked. He replied, the man they called Je named Jesus, because he couldn't see him, but he knew his name was Jesus, made some mud and put it on my eyes. He told me to go to the pool of Siloam, wash there. So I went and washed, and then I could see. So where is the man? They asked him, I don't know, he said. For some reason I think Australia, this is an Australian story, I don't know why. <laughs> but it's not. It's Jewish. I love the bit, come on. Are you really the man? Yes, it's me. You've seen me every day of my entire life, blind, sitting, begging. You've passed me by many times. The man they called Jesus did this amazing miracle. I was blind, but now I see. This guy was just a nobody. The blind guy by the road. Good old Barry. Good old Bazza. Here you go, Cobber. Have a few coins. Here you go, mate. That'll help you survive another day as he sat by the roadside. You're not welcome. There's something wrong with you. The door's shut to you. There's no room to you. For you, your life means nothing. Now there's a whole lot of dialogue over the next few verses that goes on. We're not going to read them. You can read them at home. Stuff, dialogue between the Pharisees, dialogue between the man. Dialogue, if Jesus is really from God, well, then he'll know that you can't make mud on the Sabbath and heal somebody, God forbid. This man's family's called in and they question them and talk about them. Is this your son he can see? Is he, was he the blind child, son, man that you had? Yes, he is. And they're thrown out and there's calamity going on. Yes, it's really our son. We would know. At the end of this drama, this day-long experience, we come to this lovely encounter with Jesus and the man. And somehow the miracle of sight got lost somewhere along the way. That people on the roadside of life also matter to God and Jesus. Because he cares about everything and everyone along the highways of life. You can count on Jesus. 
He cares about his eternal story that he's writing on people's lives. John 9, 35 and 38. As we bring it to a close. Jesus heard that they had thrown him out. And when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? Who is he, sir? Who is he? The man asked. Tell me so that I may believe in him because everybody matters. Jesus said, you have now seen him. In fact, he is the one speaking with you. Then the man said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. Lord, I believe. I believe in you. I want to follow you, serve you, worship you. Every body matters. Every one counts. And there is room for me. And there's room for you. Final slide today. God has a way of bringing good things out of wrong terms. God has a way of bringing good things out of wrong terms. The man said, hey Lord, I believe in you. And he worshipped him. God bless you. Amen.